In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the different ways in which you can calculate operating, operating cash flow. So recall that in uh, capital budgeting decisions, one of the things that you have to do is calculate the financial cash flows or the incremental financial cash flows that a project is going to generate. And the way we calculate those is that we first determine what the project's operating cash flows are going to be. And then we net out any long-term investments, which we denote with CapEx, and any short-term investments, which we measure using changes in networking capital. And in a previous video, I've explained to you how operating cash flow is typically calculated as earnings before interest in taxes into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation. Now, while this is the standard way in which operating cash flow is calculated, it turns out that there are other ways in which you can measure operating cash flow. So this video is going to walk you through some of those equations. So let's first take a look at this standard equation. So the standard approach is this, earnings before interest in taxes into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation. And what I want to do is remind you that earnings before interest in taxes is essentially calculated as sales. And then you subtract costs and we typically differentiate between cash costs and uh, non-cash costs like depreciation. So depreciation is a non-cash expense. All the other costs like wages and salaries and utilities and marketing expenses, all of those sort of fall under cash costs. So earnings before interest and taxes is really just the difference between all of these. So when we say operating cash flow is EBIT into one minus the tax rate, what we're really saying is take all of this, multiply this by one minus the tax rate and then add depreciation. So as an example, if you're given sales of say $1,500 and you're told that cash costs are 700 and depreciation is 600, then EBIT is simply going to be $200, which is the difference between 1,500 and these 700 and 600, which is basically 1,300. Now, here is an important point. Uh, when we think about income statements, in the income statement, once you arrive at something like earnings before interest and taxes, Typically, you have some sort of an interest expense which you deduct to get to earnings before taxes, right? So if you have earnings before interest and then you deduct the interest, then you get earnings before taxes. Earnings before taxes is also known as, or you can think of it as taxable income. So this is the income on which you're going to be paying taxes, essentially, and which is why you have taxes after that. The main point is this, whenever we are calculating financial cash flows, we ignore interest expense. So interest expense is ignored. That does not necessarily mean that interest expense is in fact zero. Okay, this is an important point. You may very well be looking at a project that is partly funded with debt and so you may have interest expense. However, when you're looking to calculate that project's operating cash flow, you do not account for that interest expense. And in a previous video, I've sort of talked about why that is, but essentially interest expense is a financing expense and we do not account for financing expenses in our cash flow calculations. The reason why this is important is that earnings before interest in taxes and earnings before taxes for our purposes is therefore always going to be the same. It's going to be the same and that is what I'm mentioning here. Earnings before taxes is the same as earnings before interest in taxes. Meaning that when you calculate something like earnings before interest in taxes for operating cash flow calculations, essentially for all practical purposes, this is like your taxable income. This is going to be useful, why? Because uh, when you apply taxes of say 21% to this earnings before taxes of 200, that's 42. So when you get EBIT into one minus the tax rate, what is this? Essentially, when we said that earnings before taxes is taxable income, and then you deduct the taxes, this is nothing but then net income. This is like net income, right? Because net income is nothing but whatever your taxable income is minus the taxes. Again, I wanna be careful. If you're gonna go and take a look at your net income on the income statement, it is not calculated that way. Here, 
you're calculating net income in a very specific way, treating interest expense as zero. In fact, for more fi advanced finance classes, you may very well hear the term, what is the project's unlevered, unlevered net income? Unlevered net income. And that is what this refers to, the net income that you would have received, that you would have received if you had no leverage, if you had no debt, and therefore if you had no interest expense. So this is very, very important. And so now, essentially then, what are we saying? We're saying that if this is your taxable income, if all of this is your taxable income, EBIT, and then you're saying, okay, multiplied by one minus the tax rate, then you're essentially saying, okay, tell me how much of my taxable income is left after I've paid taxes on it, then all of this is essentially net income or unlevered net income. And we're saying operating cash flow can thus be calculated as net income, so all of this being net income, plus depreciation, plus depreciation, okay? And so sometimes this approach, which I have referred to as the standard approach to calculating operating cash flow, sometimes it is also referred to as the bottom-up approach to calculating operating cash flow because you're literally starting from the bottom where your EBIT into 1 minus the tax rate is technically or for all practical purposes your net income or unlevered net income and then you're adding back depreciation that was already at the top so you're going from bottom to the top bottom up and getting operating cash flow that way so taking the numbers here our net income is essentially 158 and you're adding back depreciation to it which is 600 so operating cash flow is 758 dollars now there are other ways in which we can calculate operating cash flow one of the uh, approaches to it is known as the top-down approach. The top-down approach basically says that if you want to calculate operating cash flow, take your sales, subtract the cash costs, okay? So sales brings in some money, cash costs, money goes out, and then also uh, subtract any money that goes out because of taxes, and that's it. Uh, so, for example... If, uh, if taking the same numbers, if you have sales, say of uh, 1500, and if you have cash costs, which are 700, then do this math and then also subtract taxes. And if you take a look at our tax calculation, our taxes were $42. Uh, and so if you will do this math, you will find out that this will also solve out to $758. Now, while the math may work out, Right? While the math may work out and you may get the same operating cash flow as you got from the bottom-up approach, you, some of you may be confused because you're like, hey, wait a minute, don't we have to account for the non-cash expense nature of depreciation? Like, where is depreciation in this? Well, depreciation is not showing up directly in this formula, but it is kind of there because the reason why your taxes are only $42 is because you're applying 21% tax rate on your earnings before interest and taxes, which is $200. Put differently, when you do 1500 minus 700, you get $800, you're not applying taxes to that. So this is very, very important. So to illustrate this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna use the symbol S for sales. I'm gonna use the symbol C uh, for cash costs. I'm gonna use the symbol D for depreciation. And I'm going to use the symbol small t to denote the tax rate. So when you can write operating cash flow, if you write this, you can write this as sales, which is S minus C. That's fine. But the taxes, taxes are the tax rate multiplied by the difference between S minus C minus D, which is netting out depreciation as well. As you can see, you're applying 21% tax rate on sales minus costs minus depreciation the reason why i'm writing all of this all of this uh, in this fashion is because i want you to appreciate that essentially this formula is no different from the formula that you've seen before specifically here's what i'm going to do bear with me what i'm going to do is that i'm going to subtract uh, depreciation and then add depreciation again Right? It doesn't change anything, right? Because this cancels out. But now, 
S minus C minus D, I want to write this together over here. So this is S minus C minus D. I'm writing all of this together here, okay? I basically took this guy and put it right here. Then I'm going to write this portion, which is minus T into S minus C minus D. So now all of, basically I've written all, everything from here till here. So all of this is here. And now finally I have plus D. And now look, what is S minus C minus D? Sales minus costs minus depreciation. Hey, guess what? That's your EBIT. And when you subtract taxes on that same number, if you re rewrite this, you can write all of this as S minus C minus D, all of this into one minus T and then plus D. Guess what? All of this is essentially EBIT. So this is not, all of this just translates to the same thing. EBIT into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation. So, so look, I didn't have to do all this. I just wanted to make a point, which is that when we write operating cash flow in this fashion, sales minus cash costs minus taxes, it is no different from the formula that you have, in fact, seen before, which is the same formula that you got from the bottom up approach. And finally, there's an alternative approach to calculating operating cash flow, which is known as the tax shield approach. And according to that approach, you can calculate operating cash flow as sales minus cash costs, all of this multiplied by one minus the tax rate, and then you add T times depreciation. Whenever we do T times depreciation, this portion is known as the depreciation, depreciation tax shield. Uh, the idea of tax shield is an important one in finance. Depreciation is an expense that helps reduce our tax liability, even though no cash is technically going out of the business. And so we say, hey, we like depreciation because it helps lower our tax liability. In other words, it shields us from taxes. So if your depreciation expense, let's take a look at our numbers. If our depreciation expense is uh, $600, okay? and our tax rate is 21%, okay, then the fact that depreciation reduces our EBIT and therefore our taxable income by how much? By $600. This means that we don't have to pay 21% tax on this $600. So that amount, T times depreciation, is exactly the amount that we are saving in taxes because of the depreciation expense. In fact, when you will do this math, you will find out that this depreciation tax shield is about $126. So again, put differently, you are saving $126 in taxes because of the depreciation expense. So the idea behind the tax shield approach is this. The tax shield approach says, hey, you know what? You generated sales of $1,500, okay? You had costs of $700, okay? So take a look at this quote unquote earnings and understand how much you will pay on taxes on that and then see how much is left behind. So sales minus cash costs, right? That is the difference between 1500 and 700. Okay. And then see how much of that will be left after taxes, but appreciate the fact that there is something called depreciation, which is a non-cash expense. It saves you money in taxes. So technically, you will get or you will have a little bit more cash flow because of the money that you saved in taxes because of the depreciation expense. How much more? $126, which is simply 21% times $600. So that's the intuition behind uh, the tax shield approach to calculating operating cash flow. And if you will do this math, like so if I were to do this math with you, it will give you the exact same answer. It has to. Like to take take a look at the sales. Sales are 1500, okay? 1500 minus cash costs of 700. And if you multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate, that is 1 minus 21%, so 0 0.79. And then to that, you say you add 126, which is basically the amount of money you saved in taxes because of depreciation also known as the depreciation tax shield. I will leave it to you to show that this in fact will give you exactly, exactly uh, $758, it has to. 
So this is known as the depreciation tax shield approach or the, well, the tax shield approach. It is also very, very important for you to, again, appreciate that from a formulaic standpoint, this equation is no different. This equation is no different from the standard approach or the standard formula that, if, that we've seen earlier. To help you see that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this formula, okay? I'm going to use the same uh, symbols that I did before. So S is for sales, C is for cash costs. Now, that's the extent of it, but here's what I'm going to do, okay? Bear with me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract, I'm going to subtract depreciation, but then also add depreciation, okay? And this is what I'm then going to uh, multiply, right, by one minus the tax rate. So I essentially basically took the same thing that is happening here. The only difference is that I added and subtracted depreciation. Doesn't make a difference, right? Because these two will cancel out. And then I'm saying on top of that plus T times D, right? So this is essentially the tax shield approach. But now here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take just this portion right here and I'm going to say sales minus costs minus depreciation and I'm going to multiply this by one minus the tax rate. But then you're saying what happened to this guy, right? What happened to this guy? I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take this guy separately and do D into one minus T, right? So basically I took this portion, right? And multiplied by one minus the tax rate and then this I took out separately and multiplied by one minus the tax rate. Doesn't make a difference because one minus T is a common factor. And so if I took the common factor, basically all of this would go back to this original form. And then on top of that, I have T times D, which is basically this guy. And so now if I write this or expand this further, by the way, this is all of this, mind you, this, does this look familiar? It should by now, this is essentially EBIT, EBIT, into one minus the tax rate. And then this guy right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up. So D times one is D. D times minus T is minus T times D. And then you have plus T times D. Hey, what do you know? This guy will essentially cancel out with this guy. And what do you get? You get EBIT into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation. Hey, what a surprise. It's the exact same formula that we started out with. So look, again, this formula is not different. The tax shield approach, the bottom-up approach, the top-down approach, they're all building off of the same formula and no surprises uh, giving you the exact same answer. Uh, in which case you might be wondering, why are you making my life miserable and giving me all these three different ways of doing the exact same thing when they all do the same thing? Well, because in certain situations, you will find using one formula easier uh, or more convenient to implement than other. And it's useful to understand and know all these different approaches to calculating operating cash flow.